liquors. So this is kind of what they look like out of the box. Usually they'll already have some sticky back on the back of them. I have two different kinds right here. This is what I used to use. It's a Cricut clicker. Um, this one's obviously used, so it is uh, a little beat up. Um, this one's kind of the one I can only find now. It looks like the, this one's modified a little, but it looks like this. It's super long, and then on mine I spray painted the silver so it wasn't so shiny. But that's kind of what it looks like and how I have it set up. There's three pieces to this, well, I guess four technically, and they come with a cord already installed, but it'll really bang up your limb because it has a little metal thing on it. But this is what it is basically um, when you take it apart. This little stainless steel piece here, it has a bubble in the middle, and then this lip right here will push that bubble to make it click. Which this one, this new brand that we get, it's pretty aggressive um, and it's a pretty heavy spring. But that's what it looks like. It's what I use now, works really good. So how I put these together, I usually use my own sticky back so I'll clean that off and then add this Gorilla Tape. It's super simple. I like to clean the back of it with alcohol wipe or just isopropyl. Clean up the back, obviously let it dry. And then for the spring steel here, you're gonna wanna use um, some sort of cord. I like using the BCY number 24 cord. It's what compound users use for uh, D-loop typically. So you find where the bubble's on top, which you can see here it's on top. It bends like this. And your loop material is going to go through one of these holes. You may actually have to um, melt this down. I like to melt it into a point like that. So the bubble's on top. Then you're just going to push this through. And then you're gonna cut this because you're gonna wanna remelt it with nice sharp scissors like mine. And then I like to fluff it up quite a bit. And then I'm going to flatten this as much as possible whenever I melt it. Because if you don't get it flat enough, it won't unclick itself properly. So I kind of do this. Let me zoom in. See how flat it is? That way it won't pull through. So once you make sure that's flat enough, and what you can also do, mine's pretty good, but if it's not flat enough, you can even kind of melt it to the spring. Now what I'm gonna do, just regular super glue, back it up, which this is AE Max Bond, but it really doesn't matter. I like to add some glue on this makes it look really ugly, but mine is almost dry. So I just add a bunch there and then let it set like that. Usually I'll um, get something plastic and let it sit up on it and then tape it down so it holds it flat with like electrical tape. It looks ugly, but it'll be fine. So this is kind of how I tape it down. So I tape it to something where it makes it a little higher and then pull the cord and tape the cord down so it's pulling that straight down and then just hold it there until it dries. Probably, probably add a little more glue here too. And it's not gonna hurt anything. And then just let it completely dry. So that's kind of what 
that looks like up close. Now while that dries, I'll usually work finish working on the plate. So what I like to do is add some sort of felt or soft area on below the um, blade here. So right here, here I'll just turn that. That's the soft side of Velcro, which works really good. Or you can do any type of felt. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It just adds a little padding so you're not having that metal to metal contact. So for the back of the blade, like I mentioned, use the Gorilla tape. Back it up. How I do that is just by, but you really shouldn't touch that where I just alcohol wiped it, but it's fine. Just gonna set that on there. Smash it down good so that you know it's on there good. And then I just cut it out. So I'll just put it right there. which I usually take my time with this and get it perfect, but kind of rushing. So then you got that. I like to make sure it's on there really good, but this tape, I don't remember exactly which one it is, but I've just find um, heavy um, load tape or whatever you would call it. It'd be good. Um, it, it's really hard to get it off the limb, so definitely wouldn't just fall off. So whenever I'm ready to put it on the limb, I would just peel that off, stick it on. But first I want to put some sort of uh, felt there. Um, like I said, I usually just put some sort of Velcro and just stick it on under there. Um, and then you don't want it too far or else it won't, uh, won't de-click. Like as you can see, this one here is super worn out. I probably shot it, I don't even know, tens of thousands of times. Maybe, maybe thousands, I don't know. But it doesn't de-click, so what I need to do is take this off and bend it a little bit, which these do wear out after a, a lot of shots, but you can kind of see where how far up I got on this one. So here's what I'm adding to the base plate. It's just soft side of Velcro. You can see how thick it is. Nothing fancy. And all I'll do, put it about to there. Shouldn't be a problem. We could just add about that much and be fine. Just where that melted loop material is. And what I, I like to spray paint this black just so you have one less shiny thing on your bow. But this one's gonna stay silver. So all you gotta do is stick this on. Probably should clean it with alcohol too. totally make that look a lot prettier but that's all I'm gonna do so now that this side is dry and that's not moving through anymore probably way overdo this but I like to add more glue on this side and then let that dry and then once you get that dry all you have to do is put the blade on to the um, base plate and then this piece will go on top and then you'll have a full cord. I like to keep the cord super long so as you can see this cord is way long which is okay because whenever we put it on the bow we're able to pull it in and out of the string until you, we get to the right draw length and we'll show that a little bit later on. 